Now that we've defined enthalpy as a state function, we're going to turn our attention to changes in enthalpy that occur when physical or chemical processes take place. And the first thing we should say about enthalpy change, which is represented with the symbol delta H, is that it depends on the state of the reactants and products if we're talking about a, a chemical process. So it does depend on, for example, temperature, pressure, the phases of the reactants and products, the numbers of moles of reactants and products at a given point in time, that kind of thing. And it's helpful to nail down those variables that are not directly related to the chemical change, the kind of non-stoichiometric variables, in what we call a standard state. And the standard state is defined as one bar of pressure or one atmosphere of pressure, depending on your, your reference. These are very close in value for all gases and a concentration of one mole per liter for all solutes. So the two key aspects are the pressure, either one bar or one atmosphere of pressure for all gases, and a concentration for all solutes, one mole per liter, and that's reactants and products. The temperature is actually not set in the standard state, but is typically inferred to be 298.15 Kelvin, and this is 25 degrees Celsius, and this can be assumed unless otherwise indicated. To again take concerns about pressure and concentration sort of out of our minds, we can define a standard enthalpy change of reaction, delta H, with a reaction subscript and this little circle which represents the standard state. And there's basically a standardized process built into our definition of the standard enthalpy change of reaction. We take one mole per liter, one atmosphere of the reactants, we convert those to one mole per liter, one atmosphere of all the products. So from the reactants in their standard states to the products in their standard states. That process is associated with this delta H of reaction standard value. And it's reported in units of energy per mole. So the units of enthalpy are the units of energy. And we say per mole of reaction events. And this is a bit of a subtle thing, not terribly subtle once you get down to working with it, but standard enthalpy change of reaction is independent of the stoichiometric coefficients of a reaction. It only depends on the number of reaction events that have taken place. And so we incorporate stoichiometry into this and divide by a stoichiometric coefficient if necessary, if we're calculating some amount of heat associated with some reactant or product, so that the standard enthalpy change of reaction value is per mole of reaction events that have taken place. And we'll see how this works in practice problems. This ensures that the standard enthalpy change value is an intensive quantity for a reaction as it's written. It doesn't depend on the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants and products or how many reaction events have taken place in a particular situation. One particular type of standard reaction enthalpy that we'll come across is called the standard enthalpy of combustion. And you may see that written with a subscript C. It still has the little circle indicating that this is a standard enthalpy change from the reactants in the standard state to the products in the standard state. All that's really special about the enthalpy of combustion is that it refers to a specific chemical reaction, specifically the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance reacts with oxygen under standard conditions. And this is a combustion process. So we often think about this for hydrocarbons, other types of liquid or solid fuels that we, we may want to use um, for energy generation, heat generation, things like this. And this table just gives some examples of enthalpies of combustion and the associated combustion reactions. And what we can notice is that for each of the substances, the enthalpy of combustion corresponds to reaction of one mole of the substance itself, one mole of carbon, one mole of hydrogen, one mole of magnesium, etc with an amount of oxygen required to generate an oxidized product on the right-hand side. And in all cases, these enthalpies of combustion are negative, meaning the enthalpy of the products is lower than the enthalpy of the reactants or the reaction is exothermic. Intuitively makes sense for combustion, right? That combustion reactions are generally exothermic. The units here are kilojoules per mole. And note that this per mole refers to per mole of reaction events because we're dealing with one mole of the substance of interest by definition essentially here, this is the same as saying 
per mole of carbon, hydrogen, magnesium, etc. But in general, this per mole that I've highlighted in red refers to a mole of reaction events, which you can think of as involving one occurrence of the reaction occurring, kind of like a hidden one above the reaction arrow. So that's enthalpy of combustion. It works exactly like standard enthalpy change of reaction. It's just a specific instance of enthalpy of reaction involving reaction with oxygen. Let's work a practice problem where we work with enthalpy of combustion. So gasoline, naturally, a strongly exothermic process when it's combusted with oxygen, and we take advantage of this to power internal combustion automobiles. What we want to know is the amount of heat produced by burning a liter of gasoline. So we've got a volume of gasoline that may be needed. We may need to know the quantity of gasoline we're dealing with. And we're going to assume that the enthalpy of combustion of gasoline, which is a mixture of various hydrocarbons, is the same as that of isooctane, which is one of the major components of gasoline. And the value is right here, strongly, strongly exothermic at negative 5,000 kilojoules per mole. That enthalpy change is an intensive quantity independent of the amount of gasoline that's there, but if we want to know how much heat is produced through burning a specific amount of gasoline, we need to know the moles of gasoline we're actually burning, or isooctane, as the case may be. So we're going to need this density as well. So to proceed, let's start by writing out the combustion reaction here. And actually, we don't need to know a ton of details about the combustion process. So let's just refer to isooctane as I. We know that's reacting with some moles of oxygen gas. We actually don't need to know how many moles of oxygen gas are reacting. And this is going to lead to some products, some oxygen containing products that I'm just going to represent as P. We know that for each mole of reaction events that takes place, the enthalpy change associated with this is negative 5,461 kilojoules per mole. So let's go ahead and get that down. And what we want to know is the total heat associated with the burning of one liter of gasoline. So that's going to be a Q value. Q is going to have units of energy or heat or enthalpy. And to find this value, well, all we're going to do is recognize that we have the heat evolved per mole of gasoline. Remember, one mole of isooctane is built into this combustion reaction sort of by definition. So we simply take that enthalpy change or heat per mole and multiply by the number of moles we're dealing with to get the, the total heat. So in equation form, Q equals the number of moles of isooctane times the intensive or standard delta H of combustion. And let's add that subscript C just to show it's an enthalpy of combustion. Now, how do we determine the number of moles of isooctane that we need to deal with here? Well, we know the volume of isooctane essentially that we've got. We're going to assume that the entire gasoline sample is nothing but isooctane. And we have a density in grams per milliliter. So I'm going to find the mass of isooctane first of all by taking that one liter and doing a pretty straightforward conversion to milliliters, 1,000 milliliters per liter. That's just metric prefixes in action. And then I'm going to multiply by the given density, 0 0.692 grams per milliliter, to figure out the mass I'm dealing with. Now I could go ahead and calculate out that number, or I could notice that at this point I'm now dealing with mass units and ultimately, I'm going to need to get to moles. What I'm trying to calculate here is the moles of isooctane. And so what I really need here is some conversion factor, quote unquote, between mass and moles, which of course is the molar mass of isooctane. Now, what is isooctane? Well, it's an octane, which means it contains eight carbons. And this is something you could very easily look up, honestly. There's no need to know or memorize this. And uh, so it's going to have eight carbons, and it will have 18 hydrogens. And again, you could look this up very easily. I just know this because of a hydrocarbon formula. 2n plus 2 is the number of hydrogens for eight carbons in a fully saturated hydrocarbon like isooctane. So we will then find the molar mass or the molecular weight based on that formula. And this, again, you can calculate using the periodic table, average atomic masses, all that fun stuff. It's 114 
micrograms per mole. And now we have a conversion factor, quote unquote, from mass to moles. We know that in one mole of this substance of isooctane, there are 114 grams of material. So this is going to allow us to calculate the moles of isooctane we're dealing with. This comes out to 6.07 moles. And to finish off the calculation, now we simply plug in this number of moles back up here with our known enthalpy of combustion. And this is going to come out to negative 3.31 times 10 to the fourth kilojoules. So exothermic process, combustion is exothermic in the enthalpy change, tells us that. And this is quite a lot of heat generated in the combustion of isooctane.